The aim of responsive display is to produce just one web page that will adjust itself to any sort of device screen. And it's fair to say pretty well all websites will incorporate this stuff in the future. But even if you're new to this, once you've grasped the principles, we'll show how easy it is to build responsive pages, which can actually have many advantages over ordinary pages and can future-proof your website. We've got three short videos to show you. This one shows how to set up a fluid web page display. The second will look at responsive display where at certain browser breakpoints your page will change its look. And the third will look at setting up a YouTube video which adjusts itself in a responsive and fluid page. Okay, so let's look at fluid display first. The secret and success of a fluid display is based on getting rid of as many fixed pixel sizes in your web pages as possible and using just percentages instead. We can then leave the browser to do all the work of converting these percentages into actual pixel sizes. So let's look at our model page. As you can see, it uses the lorem ipsum Latin text found on thousands of web pages which comes from Cicero's treatise on good and evil. So we thought we'd go a bit further and give the old man a whole page to himself with text, pictures, and even later on a video. The page is split into three basic sections, the main wrapper for all our body HTML, a larger section on the left which takes up about two thirds of the page width, and a sidebar on the right with text and graphics. This setup is simple, but already forms the basis of many fluid web pages. As we change the dimensions of the browser window, you can see the display adapting, with the images getting smaller and the text shuffling around to suit, but without actually changing size. So let's look at some coding to see how we do this. In the page body, as we said, there are three main containers or divs. We've identified them with IDs as page wrapper, the main page container, which holds the other two text side and graphic side. We'll look at these again in a moment. If you look at the images, you will see that none of them has a fixed pixel size. They're all percentages. The top banner image is 100% width and fits right across page wrapper. The second large image fits 90% across text side, and this is to give us a bit of space on its right. The two images in graphic side both have widths of 100% and again fit right across their div. The interesting one is the small image of Cicero's bust in text side. For a start, the width is only 40%. And secondly, text flows round its left side when we alter the browser. As you can see, to achieve this, we've added a class called Flow, which we'll look at in a moment. Another interesting thing is that there are no heights given, and that's because, unless told otherwise, the browser will automatically calculate them when adjusting the image widths to fit in their divs. Okay, so now let's look at the style sheet. First of all, notice the hashtags. This indicates we're dealing with IDs and not classes. As you can see, there's not much to it, but the properties of page wrapper should give you a clue what this is all about. Remember, page wrapper is the first and main page container, and its width is set here at 80%. But 80% of what exactly? And the short answer is 80% of the current browser window width. The browser converts this percentage into pixels and then creates the page. Narrow the browser window, and you get a narrower page. And that's the first step of our fluid display. The two other divs, text side and graphic side, widths are also in percentages, but these relate to the width of their container, page wrapper. Now that's a very important point. All percentage sizes relate to the width of their immediate containers. So this means as page wrapper narrows, so automatically do the widths of these two divs. And since, as we've already seen, the image sizes are also linked through percentages to the widths of the divs that they are in, they will change also. 
and that's how fluidity works. In fact, as you can see, even the padding and margin values are in percentages. There are no fixed sizes anywhere on our page. Uh, just let's look at a bit of detail. The margin property in page wrapper is there to move the page centrally in the browser window. Float left and float right send text side and graphic side to their correct page positions. And flow is a class which adds float right property to the bust of Cicero. This sends the image to the right of its container and allows the text to flow around its left side. And the margins are there to give some spacing. And that's it. As you can see, the page adapts freely to changes in the browser window. But now we have a problem. When the browser window gets less than about 600 pixels wide, our graphics become too small and the page too cramped. We'll look at how to correct this with responsive breakpoints in the next video. In the meantime, thanks for watching.